Hello and welcome to the talk on sensory nerve testing and for this main lecture I'm going to talk to you about dermatones and also cutaneous nerve supply. So these are taken from my vital nerve book and also from my courses I run as well. Now so what is a dermatone? So we think about the word if you like dermatone so an area of skin innervated by a single nerve root okay so it's the skin and it's by a single nerve root so have a look at this picture of the upper limb and for instance we've got say c6 here and obviously c5 c4 and if you think about c5 in particular then the nerve root will be c4 and c5 and if that nerve root is affected, then the person might have dermatone sensations. And vice versa, if you've got, say, C5, C6 disc problem, then they might have C6 symptoms. And also C7, if they've got an issue between C6 and C7. And these are the common sort of areas. Uh, when I say C6 here, which is fine, but typically the patient tends to have more pain around this sort of like forearm coming down here. So this sort of area coming down towards this sort of like thumb. So we can get pain all the way along there. <clears throat> we can also get shoulder pain as well, uh, mid scapular pain because um, of the innovation. And um, so just bear that in mind. Don't tend to get too much of an issue with a C2 or C3. Um, sometimes C4, but not very often, is mainly C5 nerve root, C6 nerve root, and also C7 nerve root. You can see here as well, this is C8. Patients have tingling along here. If they've got tingling, say, to the little finger, then that might be simply related to the cutaneous nerve or the ulnar nerve. Um, whereas if you've got tingling all the way along here, then it might have a C8 dermatonal type of referred pattern. Okay, let's move on to the, the next slide. So a lot of people, patients, will get symptoms in the hand. Um, so when patients talk about, say, a sharp shooting, stabbing type of pain, then typically it's probably going to be like a, like a radiculopathy coming from a nerve root. So for instance, if they've got a C6 nerve root pain, as again, you know, it's a C4, sorry, C5 and C6 disc level uh, affecting the C6 nerve root, then it might get pain along this sort of dermatome. C7, yeah, um, some dermatome pictures will only show the middle finger, uh, whereas this one will show other components as well, other fingers yeah, along here. And also some C7 dermatome maps sometimes will stop at the wrist, but you can see this one continues up sort of forearm along here and some patients will talk about pain going all the way down the arm towards the middle finger so this is the dorsal surface this is the palmar surface here if patients for instance was having like a numbness um, or altered sensation say to the thumb index middle and half a ring and that could be more of a cutaneous nerve coming from the median nerve um, especially if they've got tingling, say, around the sort of areas. So it might not be a C7 issue. It might just be an issue with a median nerve and vice versa. If patient has tingling to the little finger along here and half the ring finger, if I can draw this correctly, not quite, but on this half, this half in here. Okay, so this, uh, just a little arrow. So they've got tingling on the little finger and half the ring finger on this side. And it could be from the ulnar nerve distribution. If they've got a C8 issue, dermatome, then it's going to affect all this area along here. So this is the whole body. Lots of patients have sciatic type of symptoms. So they might get sort of like pain around the lower limb, especially around the S1 nerve root on the lateral side of the foot. You can see S1 is also here. Yeah, And then some dermatomes will show it here, like my one. And L5 is quite a common area as well, and even L4. L4, uh, medial sort of like shin area. L5, lateral sort of shin area around here. And then further up, you've got an L3, yeah, an L2, 
and L1 more around the sort of groin area. You don't tend to get disc pathology around L1-2 or even 2-3. Um, tends to be more further on, um, like L4-5 or L5-S1 region. So you can see the whole, so like dermatonal map there. As I said, some some books will show it slightly different. Um, and that's just the way it is really for um, dermatonal maps. It's hard to say exactly which one is correct because they have like an overlap. Um, like for instance, C5 here. So when we are testing C5, you know, if we were testing this area, just say there, there's a close overlap, if you like, between C5 and C6. So you might end up, say, testing one point here, say, like Lex there, yeah, and also maybe one point here. So you might do two areas within one dermatome, you know, just in case it overlaps, say, just between C4 and C5 area in here. Okay, moving on. Now, a cutaneous nerve supply. So a cutaneous nerve innervation is basically only, as in just, to the sensory area of the skin by a specific cutaneous nerve. It's hard to explain exactly what that is, so it's easier to show you a picture. Now, have a look at this picture here. So, you know, there's a, there's a similarity, if you like, between the dermatomes, as I'll show you a picture shortly. Um, but these are known as the cutaneous nerve innervation. So like for instance, like the auxiliary nerve. So I'll do a couple of examples. So the auxiliary nerve, which is a C5 and C6 nerve innervation, but um, the sensory supply is sort of like this area. They do call it like the regimental badge area. So it involves this area. So there is a little patch on the arm called the regimental badge. Um, and that's only specific to the auxiliary nerve sensory supply. So the cutaneous nerve of the auxiliary will only supply a small area of the arm, whereas C5 will cover like a bigger area. Like um, on the outside part of the leg around here, so this area is all in purple. Okay, so it's the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, and that comes from L2 and L3. And um, so it's a sensory nerve just on the outside along here. So it'll give you altered sensations along here. Medically, it's actually called uh, neuralgia parasitica. So it sounds a bit strange. Um, but all, you know, when, like ladies who are pregnant, you might find you have this or like numbness on the outside part of your leg. And where this nerve shows itself, uh, around this all like anterior superior iliac spine. Okay, so like the A A S around here. So um give or take. Um so where the crest is, so the iliac crest coming down to the pubic bone. Um that lateral firm contain sometimes gets caught around that sort of uh, under the inguinal ligament along here. So it's not coming from the spine like a nerve root. Um, it will come from a specific cutaneous nerve getting caught. Why? Because the lady's pregnant. And uh, the increase of the fetus growing will cause like a compression of that sensory nerve. So lateral on the outside, femoral, the femur, cutaneous, the sensory nerve around the sort of area. Um, so it's not specific to the dermatome. If I go back to this picture here, yeah, you know, like we've got um, like an L2 and an L3. So these are dermatome, but can you see it covers all this sort of area? where, you know, like L3 is that sort of area. So that's a dermatonal area. Whereas the cutaneous nerve is just related to the sensory component of the skin. Okay, but it's not from a nerve root. Have a look at the comparison between the two. So we've got dermatone and cutaneous nerve supply. So on this side, the left, as you look, these are the cutaneous supply. And then on the right, we've got the dermatones along here. And if I do the posterior version, so again on the right we've got the dermatones, and then on the left hand side we've got, so you can see, like say, the ulna area, C7, C8. Um, so if you've got tingly, you can see it's just the blue is half, half the ring finger just there, so just that half bit. So the ulna nerve will give you altered sensation here in particular, 
but the C8 dermatome will give you altered sensation going up the arm along here. And like the medial nerve, so medial nerve, I know it comes from C5, but it actually comes to C5 to T1, this area. And um, so you can uh, start the surface. So there's a palmar surface. So we've got altered sensations just here. And if we looked at the palmar surface, let's go back one. So medial nerve here, you can see, so it's a thumb index, middle and half a ring finger, so that's a palmar surface. You can see that's just the median nerve along there. And if you go to the next one, and you can see the median nerve is just like the tips of the fingers around here, whereas this would be more radial nerve. Okay, so the radial nerve sensory losses around here is in, in particular they'll be to the web space of the thumb just there. So some patients have a loss of sensation to that sort of area. Whereas if they've got pain, say, to the thumb on the forearm, then that's more of a C6, okay? So just a C6 dermatone, because if you look at the other picture along here, um, so C6 there, and you can see this pain coming along there. Sometimes it is hard to differentiate between the two, um, and it is a quite a complex sort of area. So I hope I made it a little bit easier for you to understand. Now, different types of sensation but you're able to test. So when we are testing with patients, I'm not saying um, the therapist would do all these in practice. Um, if you watch a neurologist, tense for sensory, um, ideally they would do them all, but um, you know they might feel it's, it's not relevant to, to utilize, especially like the hot and cold, to use maybe like a hot spoon and a cold spoon. Um, they might not do that one. But you're able to detect the difference between someone touching you lightly yeah, and then obviously if you've got a perception of pain, you know, if someone contacts you with something sharp, you should feel that. If someone applies pressure, you should feel that. Naturally, you should be able to differentiate between a sensation of heat, yeah, and vice versa with cold. Uh, vibration's a tricky one. We need like a like a tuning fork, which I'll show you a picture of. And also, if you were to hold someone's finger and you ask them to close their eye and you flexed their finger and extended their finger, then it should be able to understand what it is you are doing and say that you are flexing my finger or you are extending my finger etc. So naturally these are all neurological types of sensation but the patient like yourself should be able to perceive. Some of the testing equipment we can use this is called a neuro tip so we have a sharp end just here okay so a sharp end just there where I put the X and then we've got a blunt end at the bottom of it. This is like a simple hat pin, so we've got a sharp end at the bottom, and then this would be the blunt end yeah, along here, so we can use this area. And then this is like a, from a reflex hammer, um, they normally come in the tip, so we've got a, like a sharp end along here, and sometimes they have like a little brush on the end, um, or on the other end, doesn't really matter, it's like along here, and then that would be for the light sort of touch. So example, so for instance, we would test the non-painful side first. Um, so this this is the right hand. Okay, this is the left hand. So this is where she doesn't have any symptoms. So then we would say use something sharp, and then we would ask the patient to say with her eyes closed, and we would say, uh, "Let me know when I contact you." And we can differentiate between say sharp and blunt. So we might put something sharp here around the C seven. You know, we might put something blunt around here of the C6. We might put something, say, sharp here, yeah, around the sort of like C8 area. But C8, remember, will be all the way along that sort of area as well. So you can do sharp and blunt um, by just literally just, you know, changing the, the equipment you are using, turn it over. So one side is sharp and one side is blunt. And then you would then test the side that she has the symptoms on to see if there is a discrepancy between the right and the left side. It also tests light touch. In this case, we've got like a piece of cotton wool. Um, so this would be like a C6 dermatome. We wouldn't just touch one area, say here. We might also include another area just there or even a little area further up. So this would be a C6. And then from C6, we might say go around here to C7 to C8, even working up the arm to C5 and C4 and then you naturally compare on the other side. 
on the lower limb. So this would be an L5 light touch. S1 will be more over on the lateral side and L4 will be more on that medial shin. So you can sort of like test different sort of like areas on there. So this is an L4 using the sharp end. And again, you've got the other end, which is the blunt. Okay, so you've got sharp and blunt. You can use the hot and cold as well. Yeah, so if you had like a like a bowl of small uh, uh, hot water and a bowl of cold water, and then you can have two spoons and you can say, are you able to feel the difference between the, the cold spoon or just say to them, let me know if it's warm or cold yeah, when I touch you with the spoon. Now, using a tuning fork, Many people might use this, you know, if you're a musician to tune the piano, etc. But from a medical perspective, we might use the tuning fork. So we would tap one end and then obviously one end is vibrating. So the, this end down here, once we've got it tapped and then it's vibrating. So this end, we would then say contact an area, like in this case, the great toe. So we call it the hallux. And so if someone has like a, like a diabetic neuropathy, um, one of the first sensations to be lost is going to be vibration and also like the pin prick as well. The vibration is quite a good one. So if you were to tap that area or touch it lightly, once you've tapped it, so it's vibrating and the patient couldn't perceive vibration, you would then go to the next bony landmark, which might be, say, the navicular along here. And if they can feel it, say, say this is A, okay? So if they can feel it in A, but they can't feel it in B, okay, as in like here, then you know that the problem is going to be between A and B, yeah, along here. So they might have a diabetic neuropathy, which is affecting that area between the two sources. But if you cannot feel it at A, you then go, say, to the medial malleolus. And if you can't feel it at the medial malleolus, you then say, we'll go to the tibial tuberosity. So you can see where it's sort of like involved. Um, so typically you get what we call the glove and stock in that and, you know, sensory loss um, with the diabetes. And it is important, a lot of podiatrists would obviously test for this. And that's where the, the vibration would come in. So if you've got someone where they've got, you know, like a burning sensation in the foot and there's a history of diabetes in the family, then um, you might want to be testing them using uh, the vibration, especially around the hallux to make sure that they can um, be aware of that type of sensation and that would be like a, a peripheral neuropathy which is a part of the, the diabetes. So I hope you've enjoyed the talk on sensory nerve testing of the dermatones and the cutaneous nerve supply. Thank you for listening.